One, two, the cut down. Let's see what I'm going with Google. Let's see what's good because I'm telling you this now. May the fold be with you. This was like 6 p.m. 4th of May UK time. Now, if people don't understand what the May the fold be with you and why it's so genius what they did, right? May the 4th is Star Wars Day. And for them to drop that, oh, I was like, baby, baby, come on. Google, you're going to give us an official fold. <laughs> I love this. I love this. I love this. I love this. I, I, I suspect availability it might not be absolutely straight away. I might be wrong, but I do want it to be straight away. It might be next month in June, but who knows? But all I know is Google putting a foot forward May the 10th is when they're announcing it. And I believe it's announcement day. You've got to remember there's three dates to always play with. There's announcement date, there's pre-order date, and there's actual public purchase availability date. Let me give you an example. Last year of the Pixel 6a, the Pixel 6a was announced on the 11th of May at Google I.O. 2022. It wasn't available pre for pre-order until the 21st of July. And in public, you could actually buy the phone on the 28th of July. So you see the gaps there? You always got to work with announcement date, pre-order date, and availability date. We don't know what the breakup is going to be for the Pixel Fold. In terms of announcement date, we know, 10th of May. In terms of pre-order date, we don't know. And in terms of availability, where you can publicly buy it, we don't know. But... Let's not waste much time. Let's see what I'm going with the Pixel Fold. Oh my goodness. Google, you're giving me a fold. Come on. Am I happy? Of course I'm happy. You're flipping gassed. I'm so gassed. I'm so gassed to see this. I'm so gassed to see this. Like, this is it. This is it. Finally. Finally, finally. Google's first foldable phone engineered by google keep me up to date about the devices news tips and offers uh, what does it say when i sign up all right spin it <laughs> hear more about the pixel fold at google io tune in may the attempt to watch live stream ah oh. days like this yeah days like this is when i'm telling you the lover of tech in me fully, 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 fully pans and shines out because this is about damn time. And you know what? For me, where this is really going to be interesting is Google's attention and care to the tablet experience. Because effectively, when it comes to the fold, it is specifically the fold. Let's the flip. The flip is still a smartphone experience. I think the flip, what tends to happen with the flip is there is still optimization in terms of obviously the vertical infold, but there's more optimization that has to go with things like whatever the cover screen can do in terms of software optimization from orientation, widget, shortcuts, whatever it is, right? And of course, when it falls, depending on if there's a flex hinge mechanism that allows the phone to hold in a certain position at certain degrees, yes, you do have to optimize how the software would change and adapt to that for more hands-free experience, whether it be with the camera, you know, whether it be with the videos that you're watching. So there is, but there's a lot more optimization that goes into a fold than a flip device mainly because of how it's orientated to be more tablet like finally if google oh, I, okay i don't want to let me not get ahead of myself i don't want to get ahead of myself but all i'm saying is this if google are feeling confident now getting into the eighth generation of their pixel flagship devices that they can bring out a foldable device now I really, really, really hope what we're going to be seeing at Google I.O. when it comes to software optimization with Android 14 puts tablet at the forefront. We saw glimpses of that last year. You know, they really promoted their partnership and how they're working with Samsung because Samsung have really been the goats when it comes to putting, it, it almost like shoehorning the One UI experience on top of Android to really brute force things like a superior multitasking experience pushing things like the desktop experience of Dex, all these things, right? Are Google now finally going to take that seriously and let that be more of a native core to the Android experience? Please let that be the case. I beg, please let that be the case because I've been asking for this, Google. Aesthetically, when it comes to the optimization of how visually your software looks like, when it comes to also just how the fluidity of the software has been, especially since, you know, Android 13, you know, obviously we had the design visual overhaul of Android 12. There was a bit of a bumpy road to get 
getting used to that on the underpinnings and the overall software experience. But 13 really ironed it out, became even, even better. You know, what is the material you principles really going to be when it comes to the the tablet and fold experience for the Pixel Fold? Oh, I'm gassed. I'm so hyped. I'm hella hyped. I'm hella hyped. I'm not going to lie to you. Your boy's hyped. And if you couldn't tell, right? I'm pretty much expressing that. I'm pretty much expressing that, man. Your boy's hyped. What does that basically mean in terms of what we're going to be getting? The price point. The price point is going to be very, very telling because from what we're seeing, seeing this is pretty much going to be within the same element space as what we saw with the Z Fold 4. 1800. 1800. 1800 is what we're booking up when it comes to the price of this. Um, what are we getting for the 1800? For the 1800, it looks like the camera system will be pretty much on par with the Pixel 7 Pro series, um, i.e. with the 5X Super Res optical zoom with the Periscope zoom technology, uh, the 50 megapixel main sensor, and then um, the 12 megapixel ultra wide. This is where they're going with it, right? Now, a lot of people are talking about how the internal bezels don't look that nice. But I'm going to reserve my thoughts and true opinions once we see it in person because it might not be as unattractive as it has been made to see, especially the top to bottom. Obviously, I think they've gone with that route is having some form of symmetry on the right and left and symmetry on the top and right. More to favor the fact that I don't believe they're going with an in-display um, UDC camera. I believe they're going with your traditional hole punch selfie camera to keep it more high quality and just to maybe the fact that they've not because they're first foldable they've not really delved into the under display udc camera to really see how to refine it samsung go on their second generation and i'm sure for the fold 5 they're going to keep pushing it where they can get it to a point where it can shoot 4k video rather than 1080p from what it was doing at that time obviously in terms of the performance we're going with tensor g2 i don't believe it's going to be tensor g3 tensor g3 will be safe for the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro, the Pixel 8 series that, again, same time as we always do, we should be expecting that at the beginning of Q4, which is holiday season, which I believe should be October, if we're following the same trend from what we've been having. Um, ah, all I know, 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 you might be in trouble, Z Fold 4, because Google are looking to answer some of the complaints I had about your skinny behind. The outer display. Oh, I love you, Fold 4. But you need to put a bit of weight on. You need to pour a cup a little bit on the sides. You get me? Because still typing on that outer display is like worse than using my, my, my remote. It's, it's frustrating. It's frustrating. Some people like it, but... I've tried, I've tried, I've tried, I've tried. And, and and I know people make the justification, oh, if the outer display was wider, then it would be the same as a smartphone. You'd be less inclined to open the display. Bull, outer bull. It would not make me inclined to not. I'm telling you, yeah, when that outer, when the inner display comes in clutch, right? It comes in clutch when it's needed. The whole point of having a fold is not forcefully using the inner display to let it feel justified that, oh, I'm actually using a fold. No, it's to give me the Swiss Army knife experience when I need it. I showed this example last time. When I was in Germany last year for um, IFA, right? I was literally looking for a restaurant to eat. I had one tab open for WhatsApp. Then I had another tab open for Google Maps. And then I had another tab opened for YouTube. And I'm telling you, I'm using all of that at the same time with great real estate on all. And I was able to switch, make one bigger, make another one bigger. There and there and then, right? I was like, bro, this fold experience is on. I can't do this on a normal phone, not to this level of accessibility and fluidity. And I'm able to close it, come back to a normal size phone. If I'm watching a video, for example, the phone is a tripod by itself. If I'm on a video call, which I'm on a video call a lot of the time with my friends and family, especially family overseas, that phone is a tripod by itself. I've got different viewing styles from the outer display, the inner display in flex mode. 
as someone that loves taking selfies and taking a lot of group pictures, being able to use my main cameras at the back, take selfies, still a clutch experience that you're not going to be getting for normal, a, a normal phone. I, I, I'm sorry. All these things outweigh just the odd optimization issues you get with either the outer display being too skinny or the inner display not working with certain apps or whatnot. Name it. I put up with that. If we're looking at what the outer display and the overall aspect ratio of the Fold 4 is, right? You don't realize how slightly flawed, in my personal opinion, is when you move to a, a different device that actually has that aspect ratio. But you see, Google taking ownership of this, sign me up. Sign me up. Sign me up. Because the only thing that probably won't take me away from the Fold 4 is the fact that Google doesn't like giving the option of two physical SIMs. And I know for the normal person, having an eSIM and having one physical SIM is more than enough to be able to do dual SIM capabilities. I know. But having two physical SIMs is even more flexible and easier to manage, which I much prefer. This is going to be an interesting one because even with that, right, as the personal number in my particular situation ends up being the one where I have one SIM in that phone, but it has the ability to have two SIMs in, ooh, I could easily just take the business number, put it alongside the personal number in the S23 Ultra, park it together, and that fold would be the one with the business line. And I can't wait. But to kind of manage my expectations, Plain devil's advocate, are Google coming in this a bit premature? When I say are they coming in this a bit premature, is this a case where are they not going to get the software right? Is, is, are they biting more than what they can chew? Are they, are they underestimating how much work needs to go into making sure that the fold software experience, not just in terms of tablet, making sure things like continuation of one app to the other you can actually like samsung goes further to not just have a labs feature built into their settings but also using good lock right because the native android experience with tablet is one thing but the native android experience for foldables is a whole different pandora's box or can of worms right plain devil's advocate are Google coming into this foldable game a bit premature, right? Are they really going to be able to sit down and narrow and nail down not just the regular software updates that you need in terms of keeping up with security and making sure that it's a stable experience, but the, but the feature sets, right? There's, I always say there's a difference between the learning curve of learning something new, but also there's a difference in learning something and then intuitively using something. Have they sat down to really look at how using this device will intuitively work properly with someone that when they think of something and how to use it, or assume that, hey, if I start here on the outer display with the camera or this application, and I open my tablet, or I open my foldable into the tablet in the display, will it continue? Does it stop? Do I have to reboot? All of these things are intuitive, natural behaviors that have they spent the time and the due diligence, like what Samsung have done, right? Because Samsung are about to get into their fifth generation. They ain't a kid in this game. They started this in 2019. And in fact, at their SDC Samsung Developer Conference in 2018, they showcased their Infinity Flex display platform from then. They ain't kids in this game. And even then, people are still putting pressure on Samsung to do certain stuff that we want to see, even though they're really pushing the envelope, like being able to have protection against the elements with IPX8, people want them to build an S Pen into it because their display has S Pen support. So I am excited for the Pixel Fold. Oh, mate, mate, count me gassed. <laughs> count your boy gassed. I am flipping ready. Okay, I'm folding ready <laughs> for the Pixel Fold. But... But, but, but to keep it as neutral, not to sound too sucked in, not to sound too biased, not to, not to sound way more hyped than I need to be. Have Google potentially bitten more than they can chew? Who knows? But even if they do, oh, Google, I am so glad you are feeling brave enough to take this. And then I promise you, you doing this is only going to spearhead the adoption rate 
to a place that we need it to be. We talked about this before. Companies like Techno, right, with the Phantom V fold, making it much more affordable, although a very, very, you know, imperfect foldable, but really, really showing that it can be affordable and accessible in that price range. Samsung being a pioneers of it and really, really pushing it, especially with their One UI experience and their hardware innovations that come with what they're doing with under display camera, IPX8 with protection against the elements, and also, you know, the build quality with Arm Aluminium and the finish and all these things. But Google, this is you. You are the birth and the mother and the daddy and the parent of what Android is. You get this right and you push this right and you make the experience really well-rounded. Get me in with the fold.